It may bring some comfort to those who go to bed only to wake up in the middle of the night frustratedly unable to get back to sleep. While today this is seen as insomnia, until the end of the 19th century people did it on purpose. While after the Industrial Revolution, many people in Britain still swore by the health benefits of a first sleep and second sleep for centuries. According to a sleep historian, they would use the time when they woke up at night to do household chores, visit friends, or make love to their spouse. Sleeping through the night is by comparison a modern invention, according to Professor Roger Kirch of Virginia Polytechnic and State University. Speaking yesterday at the Royal Society of Medicine, he said, Middle of the night insomnia was a rare problem before the late 1800s. As early as in the 16th century it was utterly normal, unworthy of comment. Bedtime was historically around 10 p.m. After which, he added, most individuals awaken shortly past midnight to an hour or so of consciousness in which they meditated. They conversed and made love, not necessarily in that order. A 16th century physician said making love was better after the first sleep when people have more enjoyment and do it better. People used the gap between their first and second sleep to wash clothes, have a conversation or even to steal the neighbor's firewood. Historical records show it was thought that lovemaking between the two sleep phases was responsible for large families, with laborers able to conceive several children because they waited until after their energy giving first sleep to do it. It was also thought to aid digestion. If people turn from lying on their right to their left when they woke up during the night, references to two phases of sleep go back to Chaucer with a character in the squire's tale. In the Canterbury Tales, deciding to go back to bed after her first sleep unless kept awake by a cold house, bed bugs or worry, most people were unconcerned about getting up in the night. It was not seen as insomnia and sleeplessness referred only to failing to fall asleep in the first place. But the practice of having a first and second sleep fell out of favor in the decades following the Industrial Revolution when people increasingly worked long hours as machine manufacturing dominated British industry. The sleep historian said the shift came at the end of the 19th century as the end of the first sleep crept later to around 3 a.m. before it was jettisoned altogether. Suddenly sleeping in two phases was seen as inefficient and people were warned that indulging would lead to headaches and constipation. It was even feared that it might, in young men and women, cause lustful thoughts. Speaking at a Royal Society event in London on the subject of sleep, Professor Akert said, sleep represented an necessary evil best confined to a single interval, thus allowing someone to steal the march on the day and on one's fellow human beings who were still enjoying their second sleep. As a result, today, the history professor said, many people who wake at night think they are abnormal however research suggests this may be a normal sleeping pattern when people are away from artificial lights and the blue light from electronic devices, Professor Eric said, rather than the product of an implacable disorder, their sleep, viewed from the high ground of history, may just be natural.